Hi, I'm Andrew. Today I would like to teach you how to use a table to find the end behavior of certain functions. So let's take a look at our first example. All right, and what we're going to do is we're going to use a calculator to help us out, but you don't need a calculator necessarily to create a table. It's just going to be faster to use the calculator, but I'll kind of show you how it would be done if you didn't have one, okay? So first thing is just take this function and plug it on into the uh, calculator. So assuming you have a TI 80 something or other, all right, it's a great calculator, by the way. And uh, so what you want to do is just uh, plug into here a negative, negative uh, X cubed, all right? So hit the negative sign down here and then hit your X right over here and then raise it to the third, okay? And all you have to now do is go to second table. And that will give you a table readout. Now I've kind of formatted my table here. What you can do then uh, before you do it, because your numbers might look different and your table might look different than mine. Uh, what you can do is you can go to second window, which gets you the table set. And you can say, start your table at zero, that's fine. And you can increment now the values in the table, meaning the X values by five or by 10 or by one or by whatever number you like. All right, but if you set it up in this fashion, you should have a readout that looks exactly like mine. Now I'm gonna, Kind of get zero in the middle here, all right? And uh, let's analyze now the table. So when we take a look at this table now, we realize that as x becomes negative, right? As x goes from zero to negative five, to negative 10, to negative 15, to negative 20, et cetera, right? What's happening to the y values? The y is becoming, it looks like more and more and more and more positive, right? So will that trend continue on forever? Well. It might be tough to tell from just this small sample, but you can think about it now, uh, you know, looking at the overall function. If, F, if X were to become ever larger in the negative direction, right, when you cube that number, it's still going to be negative, and it's gonna be a really, really large number, right? It's gonna be really large. Then, if it's a negative large number multiplied by then a negative, well, it becomes positive, right? And therefore the y value, which is just the f of x, is getting larger and larger and larger in the positive x, uh, in the positive direction, right? In the positive y. Uh, so therefore, that would kind of be the uh, one answer to determine the end behavior. So in other words, as x, let's say, goes to negative infinity, the y value, and you can also, you know, substitute in the f of x value, it doesn't, they're both saying the same thing. The f of x value will go to positive infinity. All right, and then we could also realize the same trend happens in the opposite way, uh, except as x becomes now larger in the positive direction, the y value is becoming more and more negative, right? And we're gonna see that trend continue. So as x goes to now positive infinity, the f of x or aka the y value will go to now negative infinity. So that's kind of the end behavior, all right? That's, that's what they mean by end behavior, what happens at the ends. Okay, you can use the table, it's kind of nice, but you can also think about it a little bit by just plugging in the values into the function. All right, um, let's do the second example, right? So let's, first let's kind of hypothesize what'll happen. Um, so this term will begin to dominate the function over time, right? Because it's x to the fourth, and this is only an x squared value. So imagine you started with, you know, uh, one here, right? One to the fourth is just one minus five times then one squared would just be one. So one minus five is gonna be negative four. I would say that this term now has an, a large influence over the overall value, right? Notice how this term became negative five, basically. And then the overall answer is very close to that negative five. But what happens now when X is gonna be 100? Well, it's 100 to the fourth minus then four, uh, five, five times then 100 squared. Well, what's 100 to the fourth power? Well, it's gonna be 100 times 100 times 100 times 100, right? How many zeros are you gonna have? You're gonna have eight zeros, okay, in that answer. Eight zeros worth is 100 million, okay? So this is now gonna be 100 million, right? Subtract now from that five times 100 squared. 100 squared is going to be 10,000, and then multiply that by five, so that's gonna be 50,000. Now, where do, where do you think this answer lies up or ends up? It's 100 million minus 50,000. The final answer, who cares even what it is, it's gonna lie very close to now the other term. So if you notice, what I'm trying to show you here is that as X is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, the function is being dominated by this term, okay? So that's actually really all you gotta look at, all right? 
That's also kind of a prelude to maybe limits. Ooh, limits, right? This is pre-calculus. All right. So uh, what we can also do, so, so to confirm this, so we said as X goes more and more positive, right? As X becomes more and more positive, we can hypothesize here. I'll put it down. As X becomes more and more positive, in, in other words, as it goes to positive infinity, we kind of uh, will assume, not assume, well, not assume, I mean, we kind of figured it out, that F of X is going to go to uh, positive infinity as well. Okay, now what happens when as x goes to negative infinity? Well, same thing, this term is going to dominate. But if you if you raise to the fourth power a negative term, it'd be a negative times a negative times a negative times a negative. And that becomes a positive, right? So it's actually going to do the same thing. The term is going to dominate, the x to the fourth term is going to dominate, but it's going in the positive direction. So this should become positive infinity over time, the y value. And let's now see if it kind of conforms to what we thought. So let's go to y equals, clear it on out, plug it in now, x raised to the fourth, subtract now five, oops, sorry, let's try that again. x raised to the fourth, then what you gotta do is bring the, it, your cursor uh, down, oh no, you have to go forward, sorry, you gotta bring it forward. I think it's my first day working with this calculator. Um, it's a little embarrassing, but hey, what are you going to do? Five times. Five times x raised to the two. Okay. Hit over. And now what you can do is hit your table. So go to second table. Okay. Now let's take a little picture. Here we go. Bada bing, bada boom ski. And here are the values now for this table. So notice what's happening to the x terms. It's becoming more and more negative in this direction, right? As x is going to negative infinity, what's happening to the y values? Oh, wait a minute, it's going to positive infinity. Ha! Huh. Isn't that what we said over here? It's exactly what we said down here, ladies and gentlemen. All right? And then, the other way, right? As x gets bigger and bigger and bigger in the positive direction, what's happening to the y's? It's also going to positive infinity, that's what we said already. You see, there's so many ways to do this. You can use the calculator to help you out. You can also just think a little bit about the problem. I would say, don't rely on the calculator too much, all right? But it's a nice, useful tool to kind of confirm your intuition. You want to gain a little intuition first, all right? That's important. But then you also want to know maybe some quick methods that you can utilize, I don't know, on an exam maybe, since you're, I don't know, timed, uh, in order to answer the questions, all right? Thank you so very much for tuning in. If we helped you out at all, it'd be awesome if you can recommend our channel to your friends. We'd appreciate it so very much. And uh, we're very fortunate to have you as viewers. Take care.